hey, hey, what's up? I got my, my great friend right here, uh, Greg Goff. We have a little bit of an impromptu meeting today. Couldn't get the word out. We actually just, just I like just asked him last night. He decided, hey, I got some time this morning if you wanted to do that. So uh, we got it done. We're, we're all good. Uh, trying to kick off um, a series about, about brotherhood. And Gray is, has been my high school teammate for the last... Well, we've been on the same uh, same string for three years. I guess teammates for about probably four high school, six total with middle school. And uh, man, we just grown so much together. I have a ton of respect for this guy. He's gained a lot of my respect and uh, just a phenomenal athlete. Great. Before we start, would you would you care to, to, to tell us about yourself a little bit? Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Um... I've been at LCA since sixth grade, so playing with you since then and senior year now, and I'll be going to Belmont to play golf there next year. So, yeah, I'm excited to do this. Yeah, that's, that's really exciting. Going on to play the D1. Uh, we'll both, we'll both, thankfully, we'll both be in Nashville. You know, I'm a little on the D2 spectrum, but uh, I'm glad I'll be able to, you know, be in the same same city as you and maybe, you know, continue hanging out a little bit, meet up, you know, it's all, it's all fun, good and fun. Uh, man, I'm really excited for you. So, Absolutely. Again, like I said, I'm trying to kick off a series about brotherhood, and uh, man, you've just been, we, we've gained this this brotherhood lately, I think, this since you've been here in sixth grade. Things have changed a lot. We've grown as people. And so you you have a you have a biological brother. Before we start this recording, you tell me, like, you're, you're in the car right now because you had to take him to a golf lesson. So you have a little brother, and also like you've been on the team, so you kind of know what it's like to have chosen brothers. And you know, just outside of that, you probably have great friends outside of that, outside of the team. So, what is the difference between a, a blood brother, a sibling, and a chosen brother? I think that um, a blood brother, you kind of that's who you have to be with, and you love him no matter what. I think the a brotherhood as far as being on a team goes is kind of a different connection in the sense of like I I love you guys because I want to and that's something that like you guys are friends that I'll have for you know the rest of my life and a bond that I'm forming not just because I have to but because I want to. Okay. If that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. You, I mean, you know, this is like this is, the, this is the family that we choose, and you know why you didn't choose to have us on your team. We, we just kind of joined as individuals. Like you chose to, to care for us, to love us, and you know while we always ha we haven't always gotten along, but you know no family ever does. The most dysfunctional family right. is actually the most functional family. Right, I like that. Mm -hmm. So is there is there anything more important than brotherhood to you? Is, is that's, that's, I imagine that's something that's valuable to you. Is there anything that you would think that was that's probably more valuable than that? Not in particular. Also, another point I wanted to bring up as far as golf goes and being an individual sport is I always felt that I don't play with the same amount of passion as I do if I'm playing individual versus being on a team, because I mean, we in high school, we went to state as a team three times and just, I went, we went once as individuals, but that one year, our junior year, though we went without the team, I didn't play great, but I just didn't feel like I had the same, there wasn't like as much meaning to it. Like, the purpose wasn't necessarily as big and I was only playing for myself instead of a team. And it was weird because it was a tournament where everyone's there with their team and we were, it was like an off year and we weren't with our team that year. So it just felt strange. It did. But, it did. Uh, I was with you. We, we roomed together that individual year and no, I 100% agree with you like that. To me, was it, it did feel strange without you know Jake and Trey there, uh, the two guys that on our team that didn't go with us. Yeah. But like that, yeah, it definitely took a lot of passion out of it. I think we would have shot a lot better if we had the team there. Uh, we got a, we got robbed a little bit of that too. Uh, if you remember regionals that junior year, uh, man, mm -hmm. that was tough. Um, just Kentucky golf.
golf wasn't but if we if the system was better then it would we would have gone but it is what it is so right. it happens but no i agree with you i mean you when you have guys with you even with golf being an individual sport like it's 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 different it's um you're you're, you're a lot bonded together you're, you're not playing for just yourself you're playing for something more and it really just brings out the passion in us exactly so what do you do like let's say and you probably have experience with this because you know i've always been a, de- a, a decent golfer uh, what do you do when like your brother's in a funk? Like, let's think back to our sophomore year. Remember, I went to Gibson Bay, shot that three under, and pre- pretty much the, the next month I didn't break eighty. Like, so, yeah. So, what would your advice be to somebody like, if, like if your brother's in a funk? I would say that the worst thing you could do was would be to like push him out of the group, is because as soon as they, as soon as someone plays good. They have, and then the next day, week, whatever, they have a bad round. As soon as you kind of put them away, they're. I feel like they're never going to come back. So I think the best thing that you can do to help someone out when they're in a rough time is just try to be there for them in a sense and just keep trying to push them, even though they might not think they're in the best spot just kind of help them with advice and tips. And that's just another thing that I feel like the a problem with, that I have with going into tournaments and, and that I end up not playing well in is I'll have expectations and I'll be like, oh, I, I shot 69, like in your case, like I shot three under and now I'm expecting to shoot three under or better in this round and future rounds and I feel like that's just such a a negative aspect you can put in your head is to have expectations um because the the one tournament I played the best in this summer I went into it not thinking anything of it it was um our USAM qualifier and I honestly didn't think I was gonna come close to being in the top five like it's a lot of D1 golfers, good amateurs that have just stayed amateur, didn't turn pro. And I think the best thing that I did for myself that week was I went into it and I wasn't trying to shoot a number and I wasn't trying to get a certain place or win. I just went into it and I was kind of wanted to play my best and just see how I matched up with everything else. So I feel like the best thing you can do for someone that plays good and then gets into a funk is just to help them realize that they just need to try to do their best and not have expectations based on a previous round before a week before when they might've played their best in their life. Cause you don't want them getting to think that, Oh, I've shot that. So now every round forward should be that or better. Like that's just, not something that's going to be beneficial to anyone. So I think the best thing to do is help people realize that having no expectations and just trying to do their best, whatever that is, it's fine if you shoot 80 or 65, as long as you're trying to just do your best. I feel like that's the best thing you can tell someone. Dude, that's wise. That's really, really wise. And Like, I can... Like so, you can probably point out this where where it happened to me this year, semi state. So at regionals, I shot four under, really really great round. I only shot off the lead. Right, we go into the, our next. All right, I'm I'm going off last. I, I led the team that that day, and this is it. This is the tournament we need to go to state. And I shot <laughs> I shot eighty four, worst on the team. Went into that tournament as as you know as playing the in the best group with the best guys, and I left it with the worst score. I I, I know what you mean. I put expectations on myself. I'm like, listen, I just shot 68. You know, I I need to, and this is postseason now. I need to carry this team. I need to I need to do what I need to do, and 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 get it done. But I didn't because you know I had those super high expectations, and once you know I wasn't meeting my expectations, it just kind of became a, this little crumble and I fell and it ended up being my worst round of the year 
the only time this year I didn't break 80, so I'm kind of regretting that, those expectations now. Uh, but I'm looking forward to uh, next year, you know, learning from that. And that's that's the most important thing of an athlete, right? You fail and you learn. You grow up. I talked about this in my in my previous video. You either blow up or you grow up. Um, and, then, you know, that, that extends far beyond God saying no. You, in every aspect of life, when you get told no, when you fail, when things don't go your way, you can blow up or you can grow up. And the best thing for an athlete to do is you grow up. Yeah, I I just think that there's so much merit to that and not getting down on yourself for having a, round, a bad round, but, I mean, just realizing what you need to work on. And I think that the, that also plays into the expectations thing that I was talking about earlier and how much you practice because if you're just trying to go into a tournament and play your best, like something that's been big for me is I can just, as much as I practice, I can practice for hours and hours. And then I'm able to like mentally tell myself, like my best is going to be enough. Like I don't need to worry about, Oh, I didn't practice enough or this or that. I practice as much as I can and do as much as I can. And I can tell myself, that like it's going to be enough no matter what so that's powerful you know i mean kobe bryant kobe bryant once said i don't get nervous because if if i do get nervous it means i didn't practice enough practice yeah is exactly i mean you shouldn't right. put, ever have a situation on the golf course no matter how high the pressure is no matter what the situation is where you haven't practiced the shot you're, you're not going to be asking yourself to do something you've never done before and that's the purpose of practice, to be confident and be like, hey, I've, I've done this before. Let's do it again, you know, no matter what the situation right. is. That's, that's powerful. Exactly. Uh, so just in your experience, like, just with, just with other people, with the team, what is the best quality that you've seen a brother can have? Is it just like that, that, that encouraging when, when they're out of that funk? Is it – what is it? That's a tough question. Um – the best quality someone could have. I would honestly say someone that stays extremely like mellow and doesn't get super high or super low because I feel like having someone that gets super high and super low is, is good in some aspects, but having someone that is just like a, like a mental giant that can just like, cruise through whatever and not get super happy or super mad is just a good it's like a good anchor for the team to like bring them back to reality like mm -hmm. if it, if the whole team plays well and you see them acting normal you're like all right everything's going to be fine or if the team plays super in, like incredibly well and this person's just acting normal then they're going to be like okay, yeah, we don't need to get ahead of ourselves. We need to stay in the moment. So I feel like having a teammate that does that is so crucial. And I don't know if you know, like, Patrick Cantley. Mm -hmm. He's probably one of my favorite guys, not because he's an incredibly good player, but because of how, like, strong he is mentally. And all the tournaments I've watched him play in, he's just always – so like level-headed like he could make three bogeys and he's gonna have the same reaction on his face as if he makes an eagle and five birdies and nine holes like it's not he doesn't change his emotions or let stuff affect him based off of just how he's playing in the moment i think one thing that he does really well is he kind of stays looking over the big picture and he's like, all right, everything's going to be fine. I've practiced enough. And so he doesn't let one bad shot or one bad hole affect how, or one good hole or one great hole affect how he's going to see the whole round. And I just think that that's such a big key in quality in having someone on the team like that. Dude, that you're a hundred percent right. Um, and I can tell that's what you do. That's what you model. You try to model that. You're I a pretty, try. 
you're a pretty calm and mellow dude. You, you're probably the most mellow guy on the team. McCain can give McCain can make a case for that, but I think in terms of not letting your emotions get out of check, it's going to be you. Just with how much your consistently le- your consistency levels prove that you're just you are that calm, steady dude. You are the rock of the team, and I can tell you over the last couple of years. I have tried to embody that. I've tried to be like you because I am naturally a pretty, uh, I'm a pretty excitable person. I get excited pretty easily. Um, I'm a type A person, uh, in the psychology wise. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm high strung, but I'm really competitive. And you're type B, kind of like you're cool, you're calm, you're steady, you know, um, you're stoic almost. I think I, yeah, I mean, I definitely have my moments where I get a little rattled and I'm upset, but I think that it's something that I'm always trying to do is not get like, that's always a goal for me on the golf course. If I can not get super mad and not get super high, no matter what I shoot, I think I'm winning that day because I'm, I stayed very level headed in that round. And I just think that that's so like crucial for honestly any athlete like in any sport whatever not getting super down on yourself or super high because that like being in the moment is just not it's just not the most mentally healthy thing that you can do for like the long run of your sport or like the long-term aspect because like take for instance if i shot 67 in a tournament and i in like 67 and then like another great round whatever and then i was like super high and i went to party about it and then didn't practice the next day and i wasn't like super focused long term the next tournament i'm probably just not going to play as well right versus if i shoot that score and i'm like i'm just going to go practice the next day this isn't super a big deal or something that I should dwell on to be super happy about because I'm focused on the long-term aspect of it. So, yeah, you're really good at that. You excel at that. And that's why you are a division one golfer. That is why you have been the MVP of our high school team for three years in a row, which actually brings me to another question of mine. What has been your biggest motivator being on top, like you're, you're constantly pushing yourself. You're what's, so what is that motivator? What's driving you to be on top of our program, even though you've been that MVP for three consecutive years now? Yeah, that's a, another good question. I feel like me personally, I mean, as you know, I wasn't great in fifth, sixth grade when I started out. I mean, I, I was probably the worst on the team. I versus remember that was, um, I'm the best. So I feel like it's, it's like a, uh, in some sort of chip on my shoulder that I wasn't great. And I think that that's always pushed me to work super hard and practice a lot because, I mean, McCain was always better than me for, I mean, a while when we were sixth, seventh, eighth grade and freshman year, he was a lot better than me. And I feel like, that was like a chip on my shoulder to prove people wrong that I wasn't second best all the time and that mm. I was easily just as good as him. So I think it's just a, a chip on my shoulder in a sense. And I, and I know that like, especially sophomore year watching, you were probably really mad that whole year. This is your first year on the top. You were consistently on the top, consistently our, 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 our best score, uh, steady Eddie, you know, always shooting even par, and but people just never believed that whole year that you that Mc, that McCain wasn't as good as you, even within the team, not just like our competitors, but I remember like myself, and I'm like, okay, how long is Gray gonna keep this up? How how long how long is Gray is Gray gonna be ahead of McCain? Well, three years later, and <laughs> we found out. <laughs> It, dude, it's it's just it's just amazing. You have that chip on your shoulder. You recycle your pain. I admire that a lot. You know, you remember you you keep your your, your feet are on the ground. You remember where you were. 
and you let that push you to be who you are now and what you will become. It's just awesome. So yeah, and and I think it's it's even more. I might have worded this wrong, but it's even more than like not being seen as good as McCain, but just not be not being seen as good in my sport at all in fifth and sixth grade because I mean I wasn't like as far as Kentucky golf goes in a whole until like really this year I wouldn't say I was super highly respected by a lot of people in general so I feel like that's always been kind of like being seen as an underdog has pushed me to work super hard Mm -hmm. because I don't I want to get to a point I mean maybe it's in my when I'm in college maybe I'll turn pro I don't know but I always want to be able to like prove someone wrong that I'm it you don't have to be an insane player in elementary school in sixth and seventh and eighth grade to be a great college athlete so you and I are the are on the same boat there uh, now you've kind of over almost overcome that underdog status. I mean, now you're going into college. You're going to be back as a, as a freshman, back as an underdog. But at least our senior in high school, you kind of you proved yourself. You're beating elite players that were that had <clears throat> torn up the game for years. I, you know, I'm so and so I'm I'm kind of still still with still on the underdog level. But I mean, I agree. Like that has pushed us so hard and like. To me, you just ha- you haven't really been an underdog since, to at least to me since you know middle school when you were really starting out. Like you've always, I've always been trying to strive to be like you, and you've really helped me grow as a golfer and as a person. And I know I've known that you've grown as a, as a person as well. Uh, the difference between you now versus you in sophomore year is tremendous. So over the last four years of being on a team. Uh, what what helped you grow as a person being on that being on that team the most that's another really good question i What's feel that? like having <laughs> i feel like having someone having people like you and mccain always to practice with and i mean i've been practicing with evan uh evan davis for since my like sophomore junior year but i feel like that's such an important aspect of getting better is surrounding yourself with people who are at least as good as you, if not better. So, which makes you just like, which like pushes you. Like, I think that maybe not every time you play, but it's good to get like beat down by someone who's really good a couple times at least because it show it really brings out, the aspects of your game that you need to work on because I feel like for me at least when I'm always playing with Evan I mean everyone knows Evan like bombs it whatever he kills it that's not where I've seen that he gains the most strokes it's almost his like not mental approach but his course management approach to everything he takes so many so much time on his shots and he's so critical in his thinking. And I feel like that that's something that I need to work on. And just playing with him so much has shown me that that's like a weakness in my game. And that sometimes I rush through a shot or don't take enough time. But So I think that it's really important to play with people who are better than you because it shows you what you need to work on. And it shows shows you the weak points in your game that you need to put more time into so that's really good i know evan's a great role model for you uh evan davis is he he just graduated from belmont he he turned pro didn't he or or he's turning pro yeah he's turning pro uh an elite golfer standout guy love this guy to death uh i haven't really been around him near as much as you i don't have that solid friendship but like he's with the little time I've had with him, he's impacted my life. He's tried – I mean, he he makes me want to be better. He makes me want to be a lot more of a positive person, which, you know, mm-hmm. if things aren't going on the golf course, it's hard to, you know, think positively. And uh, – but I've, I've been trying to, to model Evan like that because, like you said, um, when we were talking earlier, he's just such a positive person. I mean, no matter what, 
kind of game he's having. You know, he never has a has a negative outlook on the game. And so I'm trying to model that moving forward into this 2023 year. Yeah, definitely. I think that's such a big part of his game and why he succeeds. Not because he's played super well, but his he's so strong in his faith and his he always has that as his top priority. His what makes him happy is not playing golf well. Like mm-hmm. he does not take his pride from playing golf well. He takes it in his his faith and like trying to help others. And I think that that's just so huge in and it helps him play better. And that's he's I've just seen him as such a good person, and I feel like that that's so crucial to your golf game is not being super self-centered and making sure that you have your priorities in check like he does 100 percent. that's good man i mean if you're nothing without something then you probably shouldn't have it that's good i mean Mm -hmm. and evan's selflessness evan's you know knowledge that his work doesn't come from the game of golf that's powerful and it's helped him become the man he is so you have good friends and then you have brothers and there's a difference there you have so you have those, those good friends you know hang out with you're, you're cool uh but then you have the, these like super tight guys that you like consider brothers what what differentiates that what's that line that threshold that pops that that right you know what i'm saying yeah i would say it's an aspect of trust like that i feel like i have friends where I can talk to and they can just be my friends but then I also have people where I know that I can tell anything and they're not just going to go talk about it to other people and spread it and whatever and I think that you can really see it in like your genuine friends that they want to see you do well and Mm -hmm. they're not centered on helping themselves but when you're around them you can really tell that they want you to succeed and I feel like that's an aspect that you'll be able to tell fairly quickly in people and that's kind of a big line that kind of splits the brothers between just friends Mm -hmm. that's powerful that's good it's real good so we've talked a little bit about you know what a brother means to you uh, what a, what a brother does that, that for for you, what you think is a brother. What do you feel like your responsibilities are to your brothers? I think that it's the main key is to just always make sure that you have their interests in your mind and you're trying to push them to do as well as they can do. Um, I think that it's really important to make sure that you aren't letting them stray off a path in a sense that you're keeping them in check and you're like, take golf for instance. And if I was talking to you and you were like, yeah, I haven't been practicing, whatever. If I wasn't your, your brother and I didn't care about you, I would be like, okay, whatever. It's one less person for me to compete with Mm -hmm. versus I, care about what you're doing and i i want to see you do well so i'd be like all right dude let's go practice today and i wouldn't judge you for not having practice like i'm not gonna bash you which i think is another key but i'm gonna try to get you out there in the most like friendly way that i can without judging you if that makes sense that does make sense i mean it's, it's accountability Mm-hmm. Uh, the greatest leaders, the greatest players have have they 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 hold their teammates accountable. Uh, you know that's how we grow, that's how we develop, and that's that's the perks of being on a team, even on an individual sport. Like if you go pro, like, with the exception of special stuff for elite golfers like the Ryder Cup, like you're going to be playing as an individual. You're not really going to be playing as a team, at least on a group of golfers. But you'll have a team. You'll you'll have. Your, you know, your, your parents will be a, will be a part of it. Your, your coach will be a part of it. Your caddy, 
uh, your, your, your girlfriend, fiance, wife, whatever you have at that point, like you're going to have a team of people around you and you should, and even if they're not competing in the same way that me and you compete, like we have to hold each other accountable. People have to hold you accountable. You have to hold other people accountable. And then that's how we grow because if it was just us, we, we, we're not, we wouldn't be good at holding ourselves accountable. Think about it. If you're, if you're working out and you're doing core, which I would argue that most people don't like to do core. I'm personally not a fan of it myself. I would rather get under a 300 pound bar and squat it. <laughs> but the thing is, if I have that accountability partner with me and they're doing the core with me, I'm going to do all of the core and I'm going to do it well because I have that accountability partner. And also I just want to be better than these guys. So um, I want to compete, and that they, we feed off that the other the other people and that accountability and that that competition. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's big. So I got one last question for you, and then I know I'm taking a lot of your time right now. Uh, what do you wish you knew about being on a team going into high school that you're going to carry going into college? I'd say there's a couple things for me is it was huge. The time management side of things going into my freshman year in high school, I didn't really realize how big like academics played a part in balancing your time. I mean, you have to be good at balancing your time with school and golf because freshman year I mean I, my whole goal was I wanted to make the top five so bad and I did but I didn't realize what that meant as far as how much school we had to miss mm. and so I did not manage my time super well and I I only have one B in my high school and I ended up getting it that semester because I kind of slacked off in one of my math classes because I've missed probably 10 15 days of school that first few two or three months because we were so focused on tournaments which is a good thing for golf but you always need to be staying ahead of it and making sure you're balancing your time so I think that that's huge for me in my college golf um, because most of our tournaments are Monday Tuesday 36 holes Monday and then 18 Tuesday and so I think that that's huge just making sure that you stay on top of it and I think that's also big just in the future going forward even just like job interviews I mean that's just a big point that you could bring up I mean how well that you were if you end up doing well in college and golf you can bring up the point that hey I've been for the past four years I've been having to manage my time well so what says I can't do it and just another aspect so I think that one huge key is for me that I wish I knew going into my freshman year would be time management and that's definitely something that I want to keep in the forefront of my mind for future in college golf and just beyond that so I think that it's one important thing for me and then Probably another aspect um, is just not getting, not taking advantage, not taking your time for granted almost because, I mean, college, you're going to have so much time. And I think that it would be very easy to get off track and, oh my gosh, I have so much time. I can go to parties. I can do whatever I can just go hang out with friends. And I feel like for me, my goal is to get as good as I possibly can in college. And maybe that's turning pro after, maybe that's not, I don't know, but I just want to, I just want for me to make sure that I don't have any regrets after college. Like I don't want to be 24 graduated and be like, oh my gosh, what if I only practiced more in college or what if I only focused more in college? So I think that that's one thing that I'm really going to keep important and like top priority is just making sure that I practice and study are really the only two things that I'm going to care about in college because 
I don't want to have any regrets being like, oh, man, I wish I hadn't gone to this party or, oh, I wish I hadn't hung out with these friends. So I think that that's a huge key for me is just making sure I stay focused and so I don't have any regrets after college. That's wise. That's so wise. So time is, is, the, is the theme here. Uh, time is very important. It's very limited, and we should value all of it. Uh, the time management portion, I understand. That I, I didn't learn that as, fa- as quickly as you did. Which may be why, uh, you know, why there's just so much of a difference between us. The funny thing was, like, the thing I realized with us, I didn't think that there was too much separating us a few years ago. I didn't think, you know, oh, I can, I can, I can do a few more things here and I'll be like gray. And we've, and you've proven over our high school careers that's not the case. It's like the, it's almost like the, the harder I work, like the more I realize how much better, better than me that you actually are. And one day, before before we graduate college, hopefully before we turn 20, I will prove and I, and I will finally like kind of be quite on your level, match you a little bit better than I have. But I mean, you you have pushed me more than you more than you realize, and you're just awesome. And the value the, the value of time is something that I've really fallen in love with. One of my thought processes this year, and I've been trying to stick with it is like, is what I'm doing right now, um, is what I'm doing right now in my situation, um, is it helping me? Is it is it helping me accomplish my goals? Is it is it furthering my progress? Uh, is by doing this right now, am I improving? Am I getting better? And so training is just it's so much more than just what we do on the on the golf course or we do on the range. Uh, like it's, it's more than that. We leave the golf course, but our training doesn't end there. You know, we go home, we we listen to podcasts, we read books, we study film. I know like whenever we've been having a practice run together in a car and you're not, you know, really doing anything. Yeah. You're on Instagram, but you're not watching mindless bull crap on Instagram. You're, you're watching somebody else's swing. I remember being in state with both and with you in Bowling Green. You, you, you show me your phone. You're like, dude, look how like pure this dude's swing is. And like, that's, <laughs> I thought you were crazy. I was like, well, that's, that's not what I'd be, you know, on social media, you know, watching. I'd, I'd be watching something like Colin or something. And that just, that just yeah. shows like you were like for most of our lives, you've been more obsessed with this game. You've wanted this game more. And that's why you're. That's why you're. That's why you're better than me. Despite what we do, I, I imagine our practice, our practices on the course aren't very diff, aren't that much different. I doubt you're putting in a crazy amount more hours than I am, if 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 at all. But the thing is, with you, your training doesn't stop at the golf course. While well, for the most of my high school career, mine did, and so what you're doing, like with your sleep schedule, with what you're eating, even like twenty four hours of your day is about. <clears throat> growing and training even your sleeping yeah. is training to a certain level and that's that might be where you've just been able to excel uh more than anyone else on our team and more than yeah. more than almost anyone in the state of Kentucky and i think i think that it's huge to make sure that you're invested in what you're doing no matter what and actually i've been re- this is what i was doing right before i picked up the call but i was reading this book I don't know if you can see it, but it's called Up and Down by Bubba Watson. And it's just going through his mental struggles and how he had a lot of low points in his life and how he was able to kind of switch up his mindset and switch up how he was thinking about a situation. And I think that it's just so huge. And just another thing that goes back to me being a mental giant, like, Bubba Watson or Patrick Cantlay is they've had such successful careers, not because they are such a better iron player or they're so much better with their wedges. That's not where the difference is cut between the top 10 in the world and the lower a thousand guys. It's really just your mental game. And I feel like that's so huge in just, not getting super ahead of yourself and not getting super down on yourself is just plays super like a huge part in their games and 
and their success in the past five, 10, 15 years that they've played. And I just think it's super huge. And even, even how smart they are on the golf course, knowing I need to be aggressive here. Or I don't need to be aggressive here or playing the percentages, whatever it is. I think that there's this so much knowledge past, oh, I'm such a good ball striker. Oh, I'm so, I can hit it so far, whatever. I think that there's so much of the game that people aren't focused on. And that's just like how smart you are. Your golf IQ and your mental game, I feel like are two huge aspects because I feel like you can, I mean, not hit the ball super well in a tournament, but the best players are able to turn those 77s that someone else would shoot into 72s and 71s. And that's their horrible day on a hard course. Like they don't let their round spiral out of control and they don't let themselves get into big numbers and they don't let one bad swing screw up their mental game and let that round spiral into shooting a whatever high number that is. So I feel like that it's just so important to keep keep yourself invested in stuff like that and reading books and whatever and just making sure that you are a mental giant. And that's just always something that I'm really trying to do. And that's my goal. And if I, at the end of the day, if I can tell myself, one, I practiced as much as I possibly could. I'm not regretting not doing something. And two, if I didn't get super up and down on myself, I mean, I won in my book no matter what. So, Dude, that's so smart. And I can just tell – dude, I'm, I'm going to – even after like – even after I post this, I'm going to watch this video so much. I'm going to watch – like there's so much to be, good stuff to be learned here. Uh, I wish I had this conversation with you earlier, honestly. Like that, like that's power. Like that's so, it's awesome. You're always learning. You're always growing. Uh, off the golf course, you're getting that mental game checked in, focusing on things that matter. I remember I told you, uh, back in our junior year regionals, where we are in the playoffs here. All right, we're going to the second playoff hole, where, as you remember, things start to fall apart. And I and I told you. Uh, on the tee box for, while we were waiting, I said, "Dude, if we if we, if we had my power, my if and if, if we combined my power and strength, and then your sheer accuracy, we would be unstoppable." And I was, I think I was at fault there. I think I was wrong. Uh, physically, I wasn't. Now, physically, if we're looking at the the physical aspects of the game, I was right because honestly, that like I I'm not half as accurate as you are, and I'm just a bigger dude than you are. Uh, but no shout at you, but, um, physically, yes, but your obsession with the mentality of the game is why you're so much better than me. Not just because you have a better swing or you hit it straighter than I do. You know, the game more, you you've learned the game more, you've thought about the game more, and then that's, what's made you so elite and, uh, just awesome, man. I know I kind of I know we, we we this conversation took a turn for the better. Kind of went away from the brotherhood talk when we went to like you know mentality and winners mentality and that's it, a good it's a good turn for the I like this, but um, I don't have anything else for you. So if you have something else for for us for me, be, please be be free feel free to share it. Uh, we'd love to hear more wisdom from the legend. Gray golf himself, Division One athlete, to, committed and signed to play at Belmont and Nashville. Yeah, I mean that's I can't go give away all my secrets, but <laughs> you know you you beat yeah. them with the secrets, and then you tell them how you beat them at the end of your career. That's right. I was listening to a podcast yesterday that said like that said something like that. Yeah, I mean I think it's just for me. And how good I can get myself to be is just those two things is mm -hmm. not regretting anything and just not getting up and down, like not getting too high and too low is like huge for me. So I just think that honestly, 
I don't care if you play football, baseball, basketball, you run, you play tennis, whatever it is. I think that that's just like, I mean, if every athlete did two of those things perfectly, which I think is ridiculously hard, but I feel like two of the athletes that I feel like do that perfectly are Tiger Woods and Patrick Cantlay because they're just like so mentally strong. Like mm-hmm. they, one big, huge thing that Tiger's dad always told Tiger was you have 10 seconds after your shot to get mad. And if you're mad after that, it's just stupid. You're killing yourself. And so I think that that's just huge. And I don't think that works for me personally. I'm just going to have, try to have no time of getting too mad or anything after a shot. But yeah, that's about it. Those two things are huge keys in just any sport, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's about acceptance. About acceptance, you know, no matter where the shot goes, it's, I'm going to accept it. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's really and just good. worrying about your next shot and the next thing. What you can control, absolutely. Dude, that's awesome. I love this conversation. I know I've, I've taken a lot of your time. Uh, thank you for, for talking with me this long. It's been amazing. Uh, so if, that, if that's it, man, have a good one. I, I, I love having you on here. Maybe maybe we can get another topic. We can we can talk on together here another time. But uh, until then, man, have a great weekend, and uh, I hope God treats you well. Thanks, man. You too. Appreciate you, dog. See ya. Well, guys, that was Gray Golf, uh, Division One golfer. Um, one of the best golfers in the state of in the high school state of Kentucky for years. Uh, he's had so many great mentors with him. He, he's played golf with some of the best of the best. He knows what he's talking about, and he is just a legend. And honestly, one of one of my heroes, one of my mentors, one of my role models as I've grown as I've grown up, grown in my, in my faith, and I've become a lot more like him, and which has made me a better golfer, and I believe a more dynamic and better person. So uh, with that, man, I'm so glad to be back with you guys, uh, back in the chair, as I said in my last video. Um, I, I'm going to be working on my next video. Hopefully that will come out soon. But uh, until then, guys, I hope God blesses you. I hope he blesses your day. And uh, I love you guys to death. I'm, I'm praying for you always until we meet again.